Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Non Sequitur Nerds. We're back. But tonight, we're going to start off things with a bang. Get out your pocketbooks, because we're talking video game company acquisitions tonight. Big money numbers we're talking. As always, as you remember, I am Tim, joined by Ian. You're on that side, because I flipped my camera. <laughs> How's it going tonight, buddy? <laughs> well, he's over there for me, so... Yes, yeah, yeah. Um... I I'm still on the same for you. You're just on the opposite side for me now. <laughs> Mm, okay, well, we'll have to get used to that. <laughs> hey, welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us again on Season 2 of non Sequitur Nerds. We are very happy to be back and joining you. Uh, you may notice a few updates along the way. We have been hard at work, and by we, I mean Tim, uh, because I've really contributed nothing to this. Um, <laughs> you, you contribute other than that my sparkling personality. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's... Yeah. Anyway, so, <laughs> yeah, we are Moving back. Uh, we took a little bit of a break, kind of refreshing things, uh, giving you a new look. And, uh, yeah, so game acquisitions, especially, like, just in 2022, I, I forgot what year it was there for a second, because we, we never uh, say dates anymore. Um, there have been a lot of, like, big moves I in the gaming I industry. Date. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the date and he can't get one. Um, exactly. Uh, so we're starting off with uh, yes. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. And occasionally, uh, just in case, uh, for those of you in here, if, uh, the background decides to fruit out on me, uh, for those of you watching the video, uh, my brother is here and joining us and he's kind of like hanging out in the background. So he may occasionally pop up. He is wearing or, pants. Or it's a ghost or it's a ghost. Let's go with ghost. Right. Well, that would... Right. <laughs> like weird scooby-doo anyway uh so yes game acquisition company or game company acquisitions i should say uh we've seen quite a lot of them within the last year we haven't really talked about them that much but given the recent news over the last month i think it's probably time that we pop that cherry and actually move into <laughs> uh, some discussions uh move into some discussion <laughs> about it so obviously one of the biggest ones that i'm talking about and actually the biggest one to date is the microsoft announcement of the acquisition of activision blizzard yeah. um this, for that company just, needs some new leadership right just <laughs> shy of 68 billion that is billion with a b, b? uh that is a lot of money folks yeah um, <laughs> yeah it is as an announcement uh you know as Kind of an aside or, you know, uh, you know, example, uh, Microsoft purchased Bethesda last year for seven billion. Yeah. So almost so 10 they just, times more. And yes, even exactly. seven billion was an insane number. Like that's more money than the majority of people will ever see in their entire lives. Except for Elon turn... Musk and uh, what's his name? Bezos. Bezos. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I don't care. I, I, but, I don't care. Still, Ball douche for the yacht. Right, seven billion. That alone was big, right. and now we've got one that's just under seventy billion. Holy right. crap, Microsoft! You've been holding that right. on so us. In well, yes, they always have. I mean, the company is huge. Yeah. Uh, as yep. much as you want to, like, you know, say anything about them, like, it they're a huge company. Anyway, yeah, so Activ the Activision Blizzard acquisition. Uh, recent reports have said that talks about acquisition actually started right after the whole HR fiasco came yeah. out Which, with I Activision mean, Blizzard. We haven't really uh, so touched that... on that, but it's like even people like, okay, I've said multiple times I, I work in a factory is my day job. Even some of the people there, like anytime there's any kind of gaming news in the news, they're like, hey Tim, tell me about this thing. Even people there are like, you know, what, what's going on with this Activision company? I know they make a lot of games, but like their management seems to just be horrible. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's that's the best way to describe it. Is their management is horrible. Um, well, one of the yeah. things about Activision Blizzard, and I've said this since Bobby Kotick took over. Uh, well, but since Bobby Kotick was responsible for the acquisition of Blizzard into Activision, he's been running Activision for quite a long time. Yep. I have always thought that Bobby Kotick is a scumbag. He is not a gamer yeah. in the least. He is a businessman. Yeah. He doesn't give a crap about gamers. He cares about business and profits. Yep. And he would always be in charge of Activision Blizzard because the board of directors is full of his friends. And I believe he is on the board, if not the chairman of the yeah. board. So the, the possibility of him being removed as the CEO is pretty slim to none. Yep. Uh, unless the board is replaced via shareholder vote. So, um, I've always said that Bobby Kotick is a scumbag. I've never liked him. I never liked the yeah. direction that he was going with Activision Blizzard. And Blizzard was actually doing pretty good for themselves after their acquisition for a while until 
Bobby started going, you need to make more money. Yeah. yeah. And then it got much more corporate and then things really went downhill. You had a lot of the original Blizzard folks leaving uh, Chris Metzen, Mike Warham. Um, you know, I, I don't know if Samwise Didier is still there. He was the yeah, original sure. artist. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, one like, of the original, like, uh, yeah. Kind of a devil's advocate. I mean, ultimately, Activision Blizzard is a company. They are in the business of making money. But you're, you, you're making that money from gamers. And if you're delivering an experience, whether it's through your products or through what you do as a company, that your gamers don't like, you're losing your core audience. I mean, I know now, obviously, with Activision, they've got Call of Duty, which, as, as a slight aside, this is the first year they announced this is the first year that there will not be a new mainline Call of Duty game since, I think it's like 2003 or four. Which, I mean, for a lot of people was, I mean, kind of a big shock because Call of Duty has been a a yearly release since the early 2000s. I think it was 2003 or 2004. They've had one every single year since then. And I, I kind of chuckled, you know, I've, I've mentioned before that I used to work at GameStop. <laughs> and the new Call of Duty would always come out right around my birthday. <laughs> Call of Duty was a required workday for managers. So, like, I would never be able to just, like, give myself a random Tuesday off. Because it either either it would fall the day before, which they wanted the managers there to kind of secure like last minute stuff, make sure everything was ready for the midnight launches, or it would fall the day of the midnight launch, or it would be like the day of launch. It would always fall like one of those three days would always be my birthday. So the running joke was I hadn't had, and I know there's some people that work you know a bajillion hours a week, but the running joke for the longest time is happy birthday. I have to work a midnight launch, which anybody that knows me. I don't dislike Call of Duty. Like, I'm not one of those people that's going to hate on it. It's just, it's not for me. Like, when I still worked at GameStop, I would try out the new one every year, mostly because they would give us a free copy. But I wasn't one of those people that would pre-order it, go out and, like, play it hardcore. Just, it's not my kind, you know, my kind of game. But, yeah, so there's not a Call of Duty coming out this year, not a new mainline one. Um, right. But, I mean, Activision's always had Call of Duty to fall back on. It's a game that people will literally buy every year, regardless of how little it changes or how much it changed. So, I mean, they always had that to fall back on, so they're always going to be making money on that front. But, like, the Blizzard side of things, when the, you know, like Ian stated, when the TakeOver first happened, Blizzard was still really good. They were still churning out good quality products. I mean, Blizzard, before the, uh, before the acquisition, they were known, they didn't produce bad games. They produced right. high quality product that you know, like StarCraft One. They supported that for a long time. You know, via updates, via keeping their own uh, multiplayer servers live. The original Warcraft series had just hellacious longevity. You know, from Warcraft One all the way up to Warcraft Three, all the countless expansions and spinoffs. You know, and obviously World of Warcraft back in its heyday was the undisputed MMO king. You just, you could right. not touch their numbers. It seems like ever since Activision took over and Kotick had a more hands-on approach to whatever it is he thought was the right thing to do, you haven't really seen that quality of Blizzard products. I mean, Diablo 3 was good. Hey, man, you, don't you have a phone? <laughs> right. Oof. I mean, no, I mean, like, that being said, like, the you know, again, going back to Call of Duty, their mobile game is actually got decent numbers to it it's it's a fairly profitable thing for them right but, well i mean if you the look Blizzard at the side of things has kind of been in my opinion pushed to the wayside in this well i i don't necessarily say it's pushed the wayside blizzard was always about delivering quality over quantity yeah. and if you look at what if you look at what the what it is that they did i mean they didn't really have an original ip until overwatch came out yep. after starcraft like yep when we talk about pure IP releases, I believe StarCraft two or StarCraft released in ninety eight, I believe. Right around there. They didn't have an original new IP until Overwatch, yep. which came out mid twenty thirteen ish. I mean it's it's been out for a while and I mean they're they're finally, you know, teasing Overwatch two. But... Right. I mean, yeah, Bl but, Blizzard isn't one of those companies that would just churn out a new game or a new game series or a sequel, you know, every year, every two years. I mean, between StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2, that was a long wait. A really right. long wait. Well, even wait. between StarCraft 2 and its 
expansions? Yeah. Um, that was a long wait. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was a few years in between each of those. Yeah. I mean, it took quite a while, but they were quality games. Yes. I really enjoyed StarCraft II. Oh, I really absolutely. enjoyed the story. And that was the one thing that would always impress me with Blizzard games is there was always this care and this focus on lore behind it. So yep. it, was, it was very much like a storytelling thing. So I was always very engaged with the same with World of Warcraft. I was very engaged in the Warcraft universe, yep. the World of Warcraft universe, oh, it, and it was like, all, you, it always you knew so much on the in. lore on, on Warcraft. Right. Like, you knew like all the lore. Like <laughs> I remember when when WoW came out and you when it first came out and you started playing it. Like I, I remember there was one time that you were like so super stoked because some of the storyline from Warcraft Three, like oh you know they started this thread and they kind of explained it, but it pays off if you do this quest in this area, but you have to be this class to to get there and do that and like. You were like going in depth on it. Like I, re I remember how stoked you were. I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of the. I'm a big fan of story and story crafting and like you know the fantasy, uh, fantasy stories and whatnot. So, right. um, the fact that it was starting to pay off for me really kind of it really kind of did. Now, granted, after uh, Cataclysm was the expansion, then World of Warcraft, like that was really kind yes. of like the last tie-in to Warcraft 3, War, the Warcraft universe, yep. like the original OG universe that there was, um, with the exception of maybe, like, uh, Le uh, Legion. Right. Um, which I think was the last really great expansion, if I'm going to be honest. Like, yeah. the last couple have been pretty bit, pretty mid. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> um, so, if, if we look at... The game has been at, kind of meh for a while. <laughs> right. I mean, if, if we look at what... Activision, the Activision Blizzard acquisition brings to Microsoft Game Studios and Xbox Game Studios. Here's what they're getting in this: they're, not only are they getting Activision as a as a comp, uh, like as a publishing company and, and Blizzard, but they're also getting Treyarch, High Moon Studios, Raven, Sledgehammer Games, Infinity Ward, Beanox, Boys for Toy. I'm sorry, Toys for Bob. Boys for Bob is an entirely different thing. Uh, not for not for this kind of episode. Toys for Bob. Uh, Demonware and King, um, and King. As much as you want to make fun of them, they've released the same crap. Uh, Candy Crush. Oh, they have released the same that. crap for fifteen years. Yeah, and you know, middle-aged women keep playing <laughs> it and yep. earning ad revenue from it. Yep, that they so, do. <laughs> King just prints money. Yeah. Toys for Bob, which let's talk about this for real quick. Toys for Bob is the current makers of Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. And Crash Bandicoot started <laughs> as a Sony exclusive. Yep. It was their mascot. Sony, for God's it, it was sake. their mascot. Sony was like Sony had commercials <laughs> showing a dude in a Crash Bandicoot <laughs> suit, like showcasing how too. awesome. How awesome Sony and PlayStation yep. was. And guess who they're going to maybe possibly wind up under Xbox. <laughs> like, yep. Come on. Yeah. So, I mean, if we want to look at this acquisition, it's very fruitful for Microsoft oh, and yeah. Xbox. Oh, yeah. Phil Spencer has proven himself time and time again to be very focused on gamers, gamer etiquette, gamer yep. culture, yep. and just gaming in general. Yeah. So unlike most CEOs, especially Bobby Kotick, uh, he's actually focused on the target audience. He Which cares about, about what you need for a people. game company. You know, you, if, yes, if, this if, is if exactly you're, if you're what I mean. Games just to make money, you're going to be churning out again. No disrespect, you're going to be churning out the Call of Duties of the world. The game, you're going to be churning out the the EA Sports games of the world, which are the same thing every year. Minor updates, full price release. And like EA Sports. It's into the game. game. Now again, not knocking <laughs> sports games. We we've said countless times in the show, Ian and I are not sport we're not sports guys. We're just we're not. I don't play sports games. If that's what you enjoy, awesome. Go enjoy it. I'm not gonna knock it for you. But Wasn't when you're turning out the same whole thing that just can't that just happened not that long ago. I, I, I watched don't know. some of the commercials um the day later on YouTube. Oh. Um Oh, I didn't. I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't even watch the game. I had to work the next day, and I'm like, I, I ain't staying up for this. But um, you need, you need somebody that knows gaming and is focused on gamers, running the show. 
because ultimately that is your target audience. Now, I mean, again, you know, like using EA Sports again as an example, they know their target audience. Their target audience are the people that are going to be buying those sports games. So they can get away with putting out a new game every year, updating the roster, maybe tweaking the mechanics a little bit. But the majority of people that play games aren't only playing sports games. So you need some variety. You need that little bit of spice. You need something new, something innovative to keep people coming back, you know, to a series that maybe will go four or five years in between a new release. And I mean, Spencer, he's, like you said, he is a gamer. He is looking out for gamers. So it's, I mean, it's, it's good that he's going to be, you know, I'm hoping that he will be more hands-on with all of the Activision studios that they're acquiring. So one of the things that they've said is that assuming this deal goes through, which they're expecting it to close in the, uh, in the beginning of Q1 2023 from Microsoft and Microsoft does a, an altered uh, quarterly schedule. So their Q1, I believe starts in October. Okay. Um, rather than uh, that being Q4 for, for many companies. So we could potentially see this deal, assuming that SEC closes uh, and approves and there's no Justice Department intervention, right? Um, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Yeah. Uh, there's no Justice Department intervention uh, in uh, potentially October of this year. So there's potential and opportunity here for uh, the you know this deal to close within this 2022 calendar year. Um, but you know if we see this happen and we see this close, then we are seeing Microsoft Game Studios be one of the largest publishers that is in existence to this day. And I'm just going to go through and name them based upon an infographic that I found on the internet. So obviously there's the major one of 343 Industries, which is, you know, the Halo Studio, their main publishing house. There's also Obsidian Entertainment, Alpha Dog, Playground Games, Arcane, Rare, Beanox, Raven, Bethesda Game Studios, Roundhouse Studios, Blizzard Entertainment, Sledgehammer Games, Compulsion Games, Tango Gameworks, Double Fine, The Coalition, which handles the Gears of War series, High Moon, uh, I don't, can't read that one, um, <laughs> Id Software, Toys for Bob, Infinity Ward, Treyarch, In Exile, uh, let's see, can't really read that one either, sorry. Three hours later. Uh, King, Undead Labs, uh, Machine Games, World Edge, Mahjong, Microsoft Game Studios Publishing, Ninja Theory, and Zenimax. Did you forget any? Well, I mean, there was a few that I couldn't name, so... Jesus. That, like, that's... That's insane that there will be there will be that many studios all under their umbrella. I mean, it's... It's, it's kind of interesting, because, I mean, like, with Microsoft, they've got so many things under their umbrella, and, I mean, they're not, they're not against releasing... Like, I mean, obviously these games are, the majority of them, if not all of them, are going to be coming out on their Xbox platform. That's that's their home console. But, I mean, it's also going to be coming out on PC since, like, d- didn't they say, like, with, with Game Pass, if you have Game Pass Ultimate, any of their Microsoft Studios games will be available day and date with release. So, yep. that means all the Call of Duties will be on there. That means any future Fallouts will be on there. Any future Elder Scrolls games. Any future, you know, Halos. Any, like, all of these, like big name, big franchises in gaming, they have. Now, I mean, they, they, they have since came out and said, because I know a lot of people were worried, especially with the Activision side of that that uh, um, uh, purchase, well, what's going to happen to Call of Duty? Is that still going to be multi-platform? Because, I mean, they, they release on Xbox, they release on PlayStation, they release, you know, they have their mobile games. Um, they've said that, you know, any current agreements that are in place with Sony are going to be honored. So that means if, if let's say, the next five Call of Duty games are all contracted to be on Sony as well, they'll be on Sony. Now, if it's only the next one or two games, or one game, are scheduled to be on Sony, that will for sure come out. Beyond that, there's probably going to be some, some negotiation on, okay, well, you want our game on your system, what are you willing to pay for that? And it's kind of interesting. I've, I've noticed that, and I don't know, I don't know if you keep up on Nintendo news too much, um, MLB The Show, which is Sony Studios' baseball game, is releasing for the Nintendo Switch this year. That I is believe the... it also came out for the Xbox. Did, I, did I, not. I, MLB. I, yes, there was an MLB game that came yeah. out for the Xbox, which was a big, which was huge news yes. because Xbox hadn't had an X, uh, an MLB game like for in ever. ever. So it's 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 interesting to starting to see that coming out on other platforms. 
I'm hoping that this is the beginning of Sony... Because, like, Sony is very protective of their IPs. I mean, we're just now starting to get some of their uh, studio exclusives on PC, which that, even that's a big step for Sony. I'm hoping that we're going to see more... You know, okay, well, hey, you guys... You know, all right, hey, Sony, the next Elder Scrolls game is only going to be on Xbox. What are you willing to do for that? Well, how about this? You know, we'll take that and have it be on PlayStation. You know, and to pay for that, we'll let you have the next God of War on Xbox. Like, play, you know, a little little trading. I would like to see that. I would like to see, you know, Xbox exclusive games be released on PlayStation, but I would also like to see PlayStation games released on Xbox. It, it's no secret, I'm more of a Sony guy. But, I, also, I do own an Xbox. I play it pretty regularly. I would like to see, you know, more Xbox gamers be able to get access to those Sony exclusive games. But, you know, on the flip side, I would love to see a lot of these Xbox games that are now studio exclusives or are going to be if if everything goes through go the other way too. I think I mean yes, competition is good for gamers because you know if, if one company has really good games, it's going to drive the other company to make even better games. That's going to drive comp- the first company to make even better games yet and kind of you know keep going up and up. But I don't want it to be at the expense of people not being able to experience these. Games. You know, I don't want people to right. be lot. I mean, yes, there's always going to be console exclusives. I mean, God of War was a bad example. That one will probably always be a Sony exclusive, with the exception of well, you know, the occasional PC release. I, I, I was going to say, yeah. if we look at like Horizon Zero Dawn, that that's out on PC now. Yeah, it is. Um, now, now the new Horizon game just came out not that long ago, I believe, yeah. maybe within a week or so. Um, but I believe that is a PS5 exclusive or a PlayStation exclusive. A, a I don't play, think it's yeah, on PC it, yet. It, it yeah. did come out on, on but, PS4 as well. Yep. Yeah. But, I mean, if we look at the number, if we look at over the overall numbers, as of December 2021, uh, PS Plus has 48 million subscribers. Yep. Um, if I look at uh, Microsoft Game Pass has 25 million subscribers. Yeah. So, obviously, a pretty big difference. However, yeah. if you look at the vast quantity of content that is available available to these gamers... Um, between either service, it is a huge difference. Yeah. Microsoft uh, Xbox Game Pass has a huge library underneath their belt, and they also have a partnership with EA, which gives them ac- uh, at least if you have Ultimate, I think, um, you get access to EA now, which gives yeah. you some access to the EA's li- uh, like streaming library. Plus, the other thing, and my brother and I were talking about this, and you'll see him on a later show. Um, my brother and I were talking about this, um, uh, that xCloud, the xCloud gaming platform, yep. is something that Microsoft has exclusively to them. You can stream games, very much similar to, you know, like Google Stadia, which is, since we've last spoken, they've killed off. <laughs> I mean, or it, it, effectively, it, effectively relegated to a marketing platform, not that it really was all that popular yeah. or interesting in the first place. Like it, was a, it was a neat idea, poor execution, though. They they overpromised and underdelivered, which you should never do with a product. Yes. Uh, so anyway, um, Microsoft and, and where the benefit here is that Microsoft has their own ecosystem that they can leverage. Yep. So they have Azure. They have their own cloud infrastructure. Yep. In in house in corporate, and I'm gonna about guarantee you that Phil Spencer walked into the CEO of Microsoft's office and said, "Hey, man, I want to use I want to use." Um, Azure to do cloud gaming. You cool with that? And the CEO's like, all right. Right. Cool. Sounds good. Spencer knows what he's doing. Exactly. And that's where I think the difference between Spencer and Kotick is, is that Spencer cares about gamers. He's making it accessible. Now, what he's ultimately doing is a business is a business thing by going, hey, guys. Pay us 15 bucks a month. Same thing you pay for Netflix, yep. and you have access to all of these games. Which like is it's a basically really good taking, value. right. It's basically taking the GameFly experience from years ago, where you can you know, like the Netflix of yep. video games yep. that never evolved beyond what it is now. Yeah, um, and like expanding that. Except Xbox has the ability to deliver on that, and I have used X Cloud. I've used X Cloud yeah, on same. a few different games. I've used it on uh, Aliens, Colonial, uh, not Colonial Marines. That game was the travesty. Um, <laughs> Fire Team Elite. There we go. Okay. Aliens, Fire Team Elite. And I've used it on um, Destroy All Humans. 
uh, both times have been fantastic. Like, one of them is a multiplayer game. I've yeah. had no issues with it. Yep. Zero issues. Now, a friend of mine did say that they had issues using xCloud on their phone. Yes. But I, th- that is ultimately... No, no, that that's a real critique against the service yeah. itself, though. Now, it's the same thing. I, I, had, I had issues with it on my phone. That being said, though, where I was, the connection speed wasn't the fastest, and even with a good connection, in this area, there, there's no 5G or anything like that, and even their 4G isn't that fast, but using it connected to my home Wi-Fi, it ran like a dream. It ran like, uh, what was it, uh, the new Forza. Forza ran on my phone like it was natively installed on my phone, which right. was freaking amazing, being able to lay in bed plop up my phone, you know, there on my pillow, grab my controller and be able to play it right there. It was awesome. I, I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's Microsoft's got a lot of stuff that they, they are very good at. I mean, and they have all these new acquisitions and all their past acquisitions. They're positioned in a very, very good spot for themselves. Yeah. And, and, and I am, Please understand that I am not a Sony hater at all. Yeah. Like I like I have a PlayStation Five. I I don't own a PS Four. I don't own a PS Three. And it wasn't because I hate the company. It was simply because nothing really appealed to me on those platforms, right. and I wasn't going to spend the money on a system that I really wasn't ever going to play. Uh, and I have been playing my my PS Five um, a little bit more often these days. Yeah. Um, I booted up. Uh, Astro's Lab, whatever that was. Oh, Astro's, um, yep, my, Astro's Playroom. Yeah, yep. Astro's Playroom. My, is, my kids like, a, my it's, kids it's like a playing. fun, like, I am so glad they put that on there. That is a great, yeah. like, fun little tech demo free game. Yeah. Like, I, I, I platinumed it because I, I had so yeah. much fun with it. Like, the kids will like, yeah. hey, Dad, you know, if, if you're not playing uh, Final Fantasy, can I, can I play Astro? Yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. So my kids ask me that all the time. So yep. anyway, um, and don't get me wrong. Again, I'm not hating on Sony. I just they are not in a position to compete right now right. with with Game Pass or X Cloud. They yep. they just aren't. Like yep. I, I have as part of the bundle that I got my PS5 in, I got a year of like PSN. Yep. And I, I just look at like the offerings, and I'm like, well, this is disappointing. Like one of the offerings for this month is Tiny Tina's, uh, you know, like Wonderland or whatever yep. it is. Like not Borderlands Three. <laughs> Just the expansion. Yep. So it's like, well, okay, thanks, well, you, I guess. You, you can play it as a standalone, though. Right, but Which still. It's I, downlo- I like, downloaded this. I'm like, oh, awesome, because I'm I'm excited about the new, like, D&D Borderlands game they're coming out with. Yeah. I downloaded it. I haven't played it yet. <laughs> yeah. So, But I want to play so, it before the new one comes out. But again, that's one of the things that Game Pass is really great for, is because you don't necessarily have to download them yeah you can stream the game yep but anyway we kind of digress so we we were talking about like you know acquisitions and things like that so uh, obviously the microsoft blizzard acquisition is a big one um and we're kind of running short on time here so we'll try to um (laughs) speed things along but obviously right after that they announced the uh sony acquisition of bungie uh, yeah. the, the original creators of halo and then the creators of destiny 2 oni uh system shock Oh, man, I forgot about Oni. That was a good game. That was a no, really sorry, they didn't do they didn't do System Shock. They uh, that was um, Marathon. I, or no, Marathon, no, 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 Marathon no, no, no. was another game. Bungie. Marathon was Bungie. Marathon was Bungie. Um, uh, System Shock was the the studio that did uh, Bioshock. Anyway, sorry. Yes. Infinity War. Uh, no, not Infinity War. Two uh, K Studios. Uh, no, not Two K Studios. I, 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 I they closed down. Anyway, their name escapes me right now. Yes, they do. <laughs> anyway, so then obviously Bungie purchased. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sony purchased Bungie. Yep. Um, for a cool three million, I think. I was gonna say yeah, seven billion. I mean, it was it wasn't it wasn't seventy billion. I can tell you that. Right. I mean, it was it was a it was pocket change for Microsoft at this point. Right. Um, but you know, it was it was kind of a big deal. I mean, Bungie's only real claim to fame right now is Destiny. Um, which I'm a big fan of. I love yeah. the Destiny series. I think it's great. But Destiny, uh, and it it also brings in, according to the stu- the numbers that I read, at least 500 million a year. So it's not like it's a revenue losing yeah, acquisition. Sure. Um, I mean, it's going to take a few years to recoup that. Right. But um, they all Bungie also claims to have a new IP in the works. 
Which, uh, which Sony will they obviously do. lay claims to, yes. Uh, which Sony will acclaim, lay claims to. But um, Sony's also said that Bungie's going to continue on as is, so there's going to be, like, no exclusivity for the content that they create. And they just recently released their latest expansion for Destiny, the Witch Queen, uh, which I've heard is, uh, from several players, is the best expansion that Destiny has ever put out, period. Nice. Which is saying a lot, because the Forsaken... Uh, Yes, the Forsaken campaign was one of the best story campaigns that I think I've ever played. So I am definitely interested in Witch Queen. Um, But anyway, (laughs) so there are other uh, game acquisitions that have been happening, and there's kind of like, oh, I don't know, maybe horse trading. And I kind of feel sad for Bungie because they're kind of like the redheaded stepchild of the industry or everyone's sloppy seconds. Like, they've been kind of around (laughs) the block to everybody. Like, Microsoft had them. They got their independence. Activision had them. They got their independence. (laughs) Sony has them. We'll see when they get their independence. So there's just like, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, uh, unfortunately, they're kind of like the call girl of the industry right now. It's just like, they're they're getting past, yeah, they're getting kind of passed around right now. They're, they're, they're like my ex-wife. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! I'm pretty there's sure. our closer. Um. <laughs> there's our closer. I'm pretty sure she doesn't watch this podcast. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> anyway wow Ian. <laughs> so i kind of had to throw that one in there welcome back to season welcome two back. everyone <laughs> <laughs> so man uh anyway um game acquisition studios uh i i don't necessarily think we're going to see a monopoly as yeah. far as studios go maybe somehow if microsoft gets a hold of ea as well Right. Then we'll start seeing some problems, but I yeah. I think at that point the SEC is going to intervene and go. Yeah, maybe not, guys. Maybe, maybe not. Let's, maybe, let's, let's somebody maybe. else have their toys. <laughs> right. In which case, then you know maybe Microsoft's going to be like, all right, well we're splitting off Xbox as their own and in, uh, independent entity of, of Microsoft, and uh, you know Mr. Phil Spencer is going to be in charge, and they're not going to be there, and they're not going to be part of Microsoft. So you can't hit us with you know, antitrust or whatever. Anyway, I mean, I could see them doing that though, splintering off Xbox to be its own separate company. Well, I mean, if we look at the history of some of these split offs, like AT and T, uh, AT and T got smashed with antitrust back in the '90s. They separated into multiple different sub companies. SBC was one of them. SBC was a cable company at first. Then they purchased Singular Wireless, um, and then they got so big that they wound up purchasing the original AT&T company, Yep. and then they rebranded the company to AT&T, so they were back where they came came from. Full circle. Yes, it came full circle. So for those of you, here's a history lesson for you folks. The current AT&T is actually SBC Wireless, which was spun off from AT&T. Adds up. It adds up. <laughs> yeah. And AT and T actually spun out from Bell Labs, which was hit with antitrust back in like the very early nineties. Right. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Um, wow. Yeah. So anyway, but we digress. Uh, so like always, we're back to form. Yeah. We're back. We're, we never left form. It's, it's let's true. admit this. It's like ADD. Like this, that's what this podcast is. It's like a, it, it, it's ADD for it really for, is. It's, for everyone. Thank you for coming to our ADHD ASMR videos. We will see you next time. Thank you. <laughs> so, what would an ADD ADHD ASMR video sound like? It would like? literally like, just, just be like, made, ran- like a random people breaking random, random, noise. random noises. It would just be a random cacophony of noises that change every two seconds. At least that's how it works up here. Um. Anyway, so yeah, we're back. That's that's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> oh, anyway, thank you for joining us. Uh, I think, are you good? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, well, uh, we're good at this point, so uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up for this episode, but thank you for joining us, as always, on non Nerds. We hope you enjoy the new format. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we welcome you back for season two. So, uh, as always, uh, we thank our non-sponsors but our partners i guess in crime uh anchor.fm which hosts all of our podcasts uh you can find us there uh which also feeds out to youtube uh i'm sorry not youtube um spotify uh anchor.fm i believe is 
Yes, Anchor.fm is, I believe, owned by Spotify now. So Anchor.fm, which uh, feeds out to Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and many other podcasting sites. You can find the live videos on, uh, not live videos, but you can find the recorded videos on YouTube. And you can find us occasionally live on twitch.tv slash non sequitur nerds. Uh, also, social media, uh, facebook.com slash non sequitur nerds, and twitter.com slash non sequitur nerd, no S, uh, because it was too long for uh, Twitter's handles, I guess. That was. Um, anyway, so uh, we're glad to be back. We thank you for joining us for season two of non sequitur nerds. Uh, what? But, why did the video just change on me? What did, uh, I, I hit a button and I don't know what I did, but I played the air horn. Well, welcome back to season two, folks. Yay! <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us. We will catch you next episode, and uh, we hope you all have a good day and a good night. Uh, so for non sequitur nerds, as always, I am Ian and I'm Tim. Good night, everybody. Peace.